gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes Mr. Burchett. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Secretary Kerry, thank you for being here. Um, sir, you're, you're unelected and you're non-Senate confirmed bureaucrat, basically. Um, can you tell me what the cost of some of these climate agreements that you've gotten the American taxpayer in, how much is it going to cost them? Well, uh, Congressman, uh, uh, God, Just in dollars. The last thing I think I ever wanted to be in life was called bureaucrat, but uh, well, we are all are so, you know. Um, well, speaking I don't myself. trust government. <laughs> I am the government, so. Uh, let me just say that uh, uh, the uh, the cost. Uh, you know, we all committed uh, internationally. The world committed to put a hundred billion dollars into a fund uh, that would help these other less developed countries be able to transition. Uh, we've never actually met that full 100. Uh, we've made some commitments. I, I mean, I can't run through them all. There are a lot of different bits and pieces to it. But by and large, uh, we're seeing many of those things repay themselves many times over because of the transformation of our economy. And uh, But, but the, can you just tell me how much we how much it's going to cost us? Is there surely some economic Well, the, the, the UN finance, you're right. And, and sir, the, the, the UN finance analysis suggests that it will cost trillions of dollars, maybe two and a half to four and a half trillion a year between now and 2050 to actually affect the full transition to a clean energy economy. But that's not spending. Most of that is calculating private sector funding that will invest in these new technologies and in these new economic opportunities. For instance, uh, we have to build out a grid, competent grid, with smart grid, so we can balance the distribution of energy in certain yes, places. But, but you understand, though, when they invest, I mean, it just this money just doesn't appear. No, I mean, you're actually charge correct. Us, you know, I was always in the state legislature, and somebody said, well, let's just put another nickel on a can of beer. And I was like, well, you know, they're just going to pass that on to to, every, to your constituents. So, I mean, I, I, I hope you understand. Let me move on a little bit. Um, can you explain why you and other members of the U.S. delegation to the United Nations Climate Conference in 2021 and 2022 did not, did not follow the president's direction to track your carbon emissions? Yes. Uh, it's unfortunate, but there is <laughs> – they ran into problems uh, apparently – and how it could get measured, how it gets accrued. Uh, it should be done, and we're trying to get people to sort of bear down. Some of those bureaucrats? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, um, all right. Yeah, um, you've also agreed that countries need to pay poor and developing countries for loss and damage due to climate change. Why do the good folks in East Tennessee that work very hard for their dollars need to pay for a flood in Africa or South Asia? Well, we're not specifically paying for a flood in South Africa, though sometimes money may go to something like that. But the United States, as I said, is proudly the largest humanitarian donor in the world. And Republican and Democrat administrations alike have historically, uh, I mean, look at what, uh, you know, President George W. Bush put significant amount of money into the AIDS program in Africa. Uh, Ronald Reagan put significant amounts of money into denuclearizing and other things. I mean, we try to help the world. And you all, as the elected officials, have to balance to what degree, what's that amount going to be? And for what it's specifically going to go? But I think our country is enriched and, and uh, that our civilization is better for the fact that we do try to help people out in other places when they're in trouble. In Pakistan, when 30 million people were dislocated last year in an unprecedented flood, uh, we, we put, uh, I think, uh, you know, a few million dollars, 100 million, I think it was, ultimately, to help them recover. Under let, let me get on something else. Mr. Secretary, I apologize to you, but That's all right. we, we've said here that China is considered a developing country. That can be left for later debate. But how many American tax dollars do you intend to pay the Chinese Communist Party for climate change? None. We're not paying them for that, and I don't think there's been one bilateral disbursement of money to China since 20, 
18 when President Trump was president of the United States. Right. But the Biden administration has put zero into that. Zero. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Burchett. Chair now recognizes.